Iowa football just around the corner, folks. Big Ten Media Days is officially underway. Iowa Media Day just a few weeks away. And, of course, the open scrimmage at Kids Day in mid-August. Fall camp will be in the midst of fall camp in a couple of weeks. Great, great stuff on the way right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm in preparation for the season. But first, before we get to my reaction to the depth chart release that was made uh, in Iowa's annual media guide, I want to thank Ascent Nutrition, their Ascent Coffee that is mold and mycotoxin free. I always talk about how great it smells even outside the bag. This stuff will perk you up in the morning and it is clean. It's pure. It's just great tasting coffee. Great stuff. You can either get it in whole bean or ground. Visit their website, goascentnutrition.com. Use the code Hawkeyes at checkout for 10% off. That's goascentnutrition.com. I know a lot of you listeners drink coffee. Visit goascentnutrition.com and use the code Hawkeyes for 10% off. So the news on this uh, busy, busy Tuesday, Iowa, uh, the Iowa players addressing the media today, Kirk Ferentz addressing the media, but we got Iowa's annual preseason media guide, which included a depth chart. So let's take a look at the depth chart and see what we can learn early. First of all, the offense. You see at the top there, we'll start at the top. Keegan Johnson, your wide receiver one. Um, We'll get to Alec Wick in a moment. He has broken some impressive records at Iowa City Regina. You go down to the other wide receiver spot, Nico Regani and Arlen Bruce. No surprise there. So you got your top three in Keegan Johnson, Nico Regani, Arlen Bruce. But Alec Wick is an interesting one. When I first saw that name listed here, I reflected back to a private conversation I had with Coach Don Patterson, who brought Alec Wick up specifically and said he would not be surprised if Wick works into the rotation. And what do you know? A very thin wide receiver room may receive some help from the walk-on Alec Wick. Tight end, Sam Laporta, Luke Lachey, no surprise there. We know that Steven Stilianos, the transfer from Lafayette, the Patriot League, he'll be uh, helping them and perhaps helping them run some three tight end sets. At left tackle, you've got Mason Richmond backed up by a guy, a fan favorite already because he was a highly touted kid, dealt with injuries last fall, Mason, uh, excuse me, David, David Kov. So uh, we'll see if Richmond can hold on to that spot because David Kov certainly has upside at uh, six foot six, three oh nine. Tyler Ellsbury listed as your left guard, backed up by Matt Fagan, who was listed much of last year at center. And here's the deal, folks. Uh, that was the first surprise on this depth chart, but besides Alec Wick, and, and we'll get back to that in a moment. But we'll, we'll talk about why both of those positions, both of those listings of Wick and then Ellsbury at the top at left guard were such a surprise because you can see the omissions of both Justin Britt at guard and uh, Jackson Ritter, who I expected to be wide receiver for at least for the time being. We'll get back to that in a moment. Logan Jones listed as your center. Michael Mazlinski, who had dealt with some injuries earlier this year. Uh, Those guys are listed as centers right now. We know Matt Fagan would probably be, I would guess, your number three guy, although I could be wrong. Connor Colby listed as your starting right guard. A lot of hype around this young man. Bo Stevens at 6'6", 307, listed on the two deep at guard. Jack Plum, Nick DeYoung, your two right tackles that struggled much of last year. Are your starters, or at least Jack Plum's your starter, backed up by DeYoung. Uh, you slide down to quarterback. This is not a surprise. I'm not going to spend any time talking about it. We know that Spencer Peters right now is your QB1. Padilla backing him up. Labus not on this depth chart. Running back, Gavin Williams, LaShawn Williams, no surprises there. Expect the freshman to to work in and, and perhaps get some snaps and maybe even a, a Devin Hilson, the sophomore from Des Moines, at running back. Fullback, Monty Potabom, Turner Palisar, no changes there from last year. Place kicker. Aaron Blom, listed as number one. Drew Stevens, listed as number two. I'm just going to say this right now. Drew Stevens is your starter week one. All right, major takeaways from the offensive side of this. I mentioned Alec Wick at receiver. Why not Jackson Ritter? Mentioned uh, Tyler Ellsbury. Where is Justin Britt at left guard? Expected. I expected the offensive line to be pretty much, as far as the, the top five guys, to be pretty self-explanatory. You expected Mason Richmond at left tackle returning at left tackle uh, a year older. You'd expect him to to make some progress at 6'6", 308. Expected Britt to be at left guard. Logan Jones switching from the defensive line, Connor Colby, and then Jack Plum. Um, Kirk Ferentz, unfortunately, announced today that Justin Britt is dealing with a knee issue and he is out for the season. That is bad news. And it's disappointing news for a guy in Justin Britt who's dealt with some injuries 
Um, you felt like his clock has been ticking for a while now, and you, you got to wonder, what does he do? Um, I believe he's got another year he can come back, at least one more year where he can come back. But that hurts them from a depth perspective. And can Ellsbury or Fagan, who's going to step up at that other guard spot? I, I don't really, before we get further into my observations here, I, I don't want anybody to read too much into these preseason uh, listings. This depth chart means almost nothing. All right. <laughs> and I don't want you to turn off this video because I just said this. But the fact of the matter is, um, I, I can see a scenario where Alec Wick ends up being the guy behind Keegan Johnson, but I could also see it being Brody Brecht or uh, even Jacob Bostick, maybe Deontay Vines, David, David Cobb. I could see him, you know, will they just play their five best guys? If they do, could it, is it possible that your top five guys are Richmond, David Cobb, Jones, Colby, and Plum? And if that's the case, then you probably move some guys around. Does David Cobb go inside at six six three zero nine? I mean, again, he's probably a natural tackle, uh, but I, I can see Iowa maybe moving some guys around as a result of the Justin Britt injury if Ellsbury and or Fagan are not ready. Fagan a walk-on, by the way. Um, so we heard about Justin Britt being out for the season. That's disappointing. The other piece of news that we got from Kirk Ferentz is that Jackson Ritter is out for the season as well. So that hurts them because I was already down Charlie Jones and Tyrone Tracy from last year. They added Jacob Bostick. We know um, they did not get anybody in the transfer portal. You know, Brody Brecht is a guy who has some upside as a taller receiver at around 6'3". Jacob Bostick also around 6'2", 6'3". Deontay Vines is a guy I mentioned who's on scholarship, but that's a, a thin room. And Jackson Ritter actually saw the field last year, recorded a couple of catches during the season. So you hope Wick is ready. Again, he's got some good upside, good athlete from Regina, uh, but they're thin at that position. That's going to be a position of concern for the immediate future, and I think even past this year, just moving forward from a recruiting standpoint, we've talked about the struggles, at least in these next few cycles so far at receiver. Uh, I mentioned Jack Plum and uh, Nick DeYoung. Those guys struggled. It's now or never for Jack Plum, and I'm going to be talking about guys like Jack Plum and, and guys that really need to take this year and make it their own because the clock is ticking on guys like Jack Plum. It was already ticking on Justin Britt. Unfortunately, now he's down with an injury. And there's other guys on this roster as well that we'll talk about in the future. But right tackle is a huge position of concern. Could David Cobb slide to the right if there continues to be struggles? Possibly. Possibly. Um, you know, I I'm assuming that, uh, that the coaching staff is willing to do that because I do think Richmond and David Cobb are both true tackles. The other p thing, and I brought this up just a moment ago, Drew Stevens is your kicker. From what I've heard, uh, he's more consistent, has a bigger upside, but we'll see. I mean, there's still fall camp. We know Lucas Amaya is also on the roster. I, I would expect Drew Stevens to be your starter week one. I would be very surprised, barring injury or some collapse, uh, I would be very surprised if Aaron Blom is your starting kicker, although he is the older of the two. So with that being said, we move to the defense in our next video, which will be published tomorrow right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Remember, Iowa Live with the one and only Mark Rogers, the voice of college football, 4.30 p.m. Central Time over at Iowa at the Voice of College Football on YouTube. It will also be available on my podcast from the Hawkeye of the Storm, available Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever you listen to your podcast will be released later in the week there. But live Tuesday, that's today, 4.30 p.m. Central Time. We'll talk to you soon.